hearted and void of their wood. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. Understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the earth. Covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young raisins when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. So open your hearts as you worship our God together. We happily open our hearts in worship to God, for He is gracious and worthy. We are embracing God's grace in a hymn of praise. Let us sing, Come thou part of every blessing, hymn number 236 in the VIP, VIP 200. Prayer of adoration. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come praising you, for you are the embodiment of God. Your love knows no bounds, and your mercy is unfathomable. Just as even we have experienced your transformative power, we marvel at the way you embrace us with open arms. Despite all flaws and shortcomings, I am who I am. <coughs> your grace is our refuge. Your grace is our refuge, our source of hope and redemption in humility. We bow before you, amazed at the privilege of knowing you and experiencing your grace. God of second chances, who turns our messages into messages of your faithfulness. We stand in awe of your consistency 
and exalt you in her house of praise. Amen. Let me of confession. Today we pause to remember God's grace towards us. Amidst our sinfulness, I invite you to call to mind each moment when you fail to embrace God's grace and each occasion when you fail to offer grace to those you encounter in various ways. In silence, may you con confession unto our gracious Lord and seek forgiveness. A period, of silence is to, a period of silence is to be observed for personal prayers of confession. Loving God, we came before you as you young adults and adults. I like seeing your grace and forgiveness. We confess that we have been consumed by the pressures of this world, chasing an after earthly success and human human vanity. Gracious God, we have struggled with doubts and insecurities. Comparing ourselves to others and embracing a sense of unworthiness. Savior, we have made choices that have led us astray, seeking and embracing temporary pleasures that this world offers in glamorous ways, instead of following your path. Lord, we have allowed pride and self self -trendness, centeredness to cloud our hearts and have neglected to extend grace to others, withholding forgiveness and understanding. Loving God, we have often doubted your love and forgotten the depth of your grace, failing to trust your promises. of pardon. God's unending grace washes away our sins. God's love and forgiveness are unfailing. When we confess our sins to God, He helps us to find our, our identity in Christ, strength and purpose in our challenges, restoration from, from our failing and confidence that God is always with us on this journey. Rejoice by God's amazing grace. Your sins are forgiven. Gracious God, may your mercy may embrace your forgiving grace as you navigate the challenges of youth, young adulthood, and adulthood. Amen. Thanks be to God. Embrace 
facing God's grace to thanksgiving. God of all the grace, of all our hearts of him that gratitude for your abundant grace that sustains us through the challenges and lifts our spirits in times of need. We are grateful for the resilience and strength you have instilled in the youth and young adults of the NCCA. Thank you for providing us with opportunities for growth, education, and empowerment and for your unwavering presence which brings us all to Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome to the MCCA Youth and Young Adults Last Day 2023. It is a pleasure to be here this morning. My name is Jennifer Brown and the youth of the Zion Methodist will be leading the service and delivering God's message. The theme today is Embracing God's Grace. May we be reminded that we are saved by grace to faith in Christ Jesus and not our own efforts. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. Welcome to all present and I pray that you will be truly blessed and inspired by the summer. Now we will have the MCCA Youth President's Message by Emily Harsh. Good morning, church. MCCA Youth and Young Adults Lord's Day 2023. Message from the MCCA Youth Executive Council. MCCA Youth, Family, Grace, and Peace to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Once again, I'm pleased to greet you on behalf of the MCCA Youth Executive. As you pause to celebrate MCCA Youth, and Young Adults Lord's Day, a day when our young people across the connection are sharing in the use of a common order of service and worship encounter, while adding a touch of our own local peculiarities and bringing to life the reality of our interconnectedness as a Caribbean people. We can't help but be grateful to God and the leadership of the MCCA for opportunities like these. We trust that your worship encounter will be rich, youthful, and spiritually illuminating. 7 MCCA Youth Encounter. By now, you should know that the connection will meet in the 7th MCCA Youth Encounter from July 22nd to 29th, 2024, in Nassau, Bahamas. Youth Encontro is a quadrennial grad gathering of young people between the ages of 15 and 25 years old, primarily from the eight districts of the MCCA. Class spirit filled, educational, and exciting experience as they prepare themselves for leadership in the church and the society. The aim is to mold the future leaders of the church and prom promote the standards of Christian commitment, morality, and leadership. The encounter participants have will always be a part of their life, and even if they slip or fall in their journey, God will lead them back or to wherever they may be used for His glory. So. We urge you to find out from your local congregation and circuits how you can sponsor a young person to make it to the next youth encounter. Let's pay it forward. Let's make that sacrifice for the building next youth encounter. Up for our young people for the ongoing building of the church. Let's extend grace even as the time demands it. Today's thematic reflection. As we reflect on the state of the work among youth and young adults in the MCCA, various persons may perceive that experience differently. For some of us, we happily celebrate the successes of our young people who demonstrate commitment to Christ and the work of God in the church community while excelling in their personal developmental journey. 
We also celebrated those who continue to deeply consider and respond to the call of God to serve in various ministries of the church, inspiring hope among those who have been laboring for much longer than some of us have been around. Conversely, many of us lament the instances where some of our young people miss the mark and do not represent Jesus Christ in their engagements, expressions, and general ways of life. As we lament, it's imperative that we remain mindful that as children of God, young and old alike, we are a work in progress and the response of the church community should always be grace-centric in that. We are to reach out to our young people, offer guidance in relation to the ideal of living faithfully for Christ and offer arms of love that will aid their spiritual formation and ongoing development, knowing the truth of the adage. There I go, but for the grace of God. This is by no means equivalent to disregarding the need to identify what is wrong, but that we will come international in fostering what is right in the sight of God. Friends, including our seniors, let us not lose sight of how Christ first loved us in our sins, gave his life as a ransom, and has brought freedom and salvation to our hearts. Let us not lose sight of how challenging life for Christ has been, can and will be, but always mindful that through God's amazing grace, we have sufficiency and are beyond able to overcome those things that restrain our growth in Christ. It's with these thoughts in mind that today we draw your attention of the story of Rahab in Joshua chapter 2 where we can't help but see the grace of God at work, offering hope of salvation to those who the world and themselves often sees as beyond liberating. This reminds us of the fact that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not our own efforts. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9. We must therefore, in the midst of our various limitations, resolve deliberately embrace God's grace. It's only in doing this that we will experience a sense of liberation in these challenging times, as young people and indeed as human beings. Even when those around you fail to offer grace, love, and support, know that Christ's grace is available. Ultimately, though, the call is that we resolve to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, making the decisive step to follow Jesus each and every day. As a church community, we must seek to become like Christ, so those among us who are battling the issues of life will know that the church of Jesus Christ is an environment where grace is generously offered through our prayers, presence, forgiveness, counsel, and other means of support towards deliverance from sin and the distresses of life. Our young people are depending on us to journey with them towards experiencing the grace of God in practical and spiritual means, such as terms that Christian community together we may as part of the epistle to the Hebrews in chapter 4 verse 16, Approach the throne of grace with holiness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. May you continue to embrace God's grace today, tomorrow, and forever as he uses us to draw the world onto him to the gospel we proclaim. Yours in Christ's service, Brother Sean A. Davis, J.P. President.
Good morning, church. Can you please stand and sing along to these three choruses? Our first verse will be, it's a great, it's a praise of God. It's a great day to praise the Lord, it's a great day to praise the Lord, it's a great day to praise the Lord, walk in the light. Let me see you walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walk in the light.
was on the other side of the city wall, and she resided within it in the wall itself. She said to them, Go toward the hill country, so that the pursuers may not come upon you. Hide yourselves there for three days until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward you may lay away. The men said to her, We will release you. We will be released from this oath that you have made with us, that you have made us swear to you. If we invade the land and you do not touch this crimson car in the window through which you let us down, and do not gather into your house, father, your father and mother, your brothers and all your family, if any of you go outdoors, if your house, out, if any of you go out of the doors, of your house into the street, they shall be responsible for their own death, and we shall be innocent. But if a hand is laid upon any who are with you in the house, we shall bear the responsibility of their death. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be released from this oath that you made us swear to you. She said, According to your word, so be it. She sent them their will, and they departed. Then she tied the crimson cord in the window. Then they departed and went to, into the hill country and stayed there three days after the pursuers had returned. The pursuers had such all the long wave and found nothing. Then the two men came down again from the hill country. They crossed over and came to Joshua, son of them, and told him all that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has given all the land into our hands. Moreover, all the inhabitants of the land melt in fear before us. This is the word of the Lord. The hymn of preparation, I need thee every hour, VIP 282, hymn number 282.
also deliver the spine in summer. The Gospel reading is taken from St. John chapter 1, verses 14 to 18. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out. This was he who of whom I said, He who's he who came comes after me and ranks ahead of me before he was because he was before me. From his grace from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel. Embracing God's grace. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, as we are about to receive the proclaimed word, we turn our hearts to you. Praying that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts all before you this morning may find acceptance in your sight. O oh Lord, a blessed Redeemer and Interpreter. Amen. Youths and young adults of this Zion congregation, as believers, do you have what it takes to become an influencer for Christ? As an influencer, you need a product that is tried and true. You need a message that offers beneficial change to the users. And in order to be effective, you have to be able to speak from a position of authenticity, authority, and experience. So again, I ask you, do you have what it takes to be an influencer for Christ? My message for this morning will help you to understand more clearly the nature of the wonderful thing called grace as we explore the transformative nature of the power of God's love and mercy, which is extended to us in his amazing grace. I will draw on the message found in the Old Testament lesson, which was read from Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 to 24 and supported by the gospel as signed for today from John chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. There will also be some useful insights which, which can be drawn from the epistle of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, as mentioned in the MCCA Youth President message. Let us open our hearts for the word of God and discover how his grace can be powerful, can be a powerful force that sustains us in the face of life's challenges. You see, the theme, embracing God's grace, is not just a powerful concept on paper, it is a lifeline, especially for our youth and young adults, as we struggle to overcome the battles and storms of this life. As youth and young adults, grapple with the realities of crises in this life, seeking for ways in which they can endure the uncertainties and adversities that the enemy throw, throws in their paths, they need to know that they can find comfort and relief in wholeheartedly embracing the goodness of God's grace. So let the journey begin as we, first, as we focus first on the Old Testament reading. God grace is on full display in the narrative found in Joshua chapter 2, 
verses 1 to 24. Contextually, the events unfold at a pivotal moment in the Israelites' journey to the Promised Land. It is presented as a tale of intrigued faith and unexpected grace. In the midst of espionage, two Israelite spies found find refuge in the most unlikely place, the home of Rahab, a known prostitute who is despised by her society because of her immoral character. As the story unfolds, we see that Rahab is portrayed as a woman of courage, which allows her to, become, to overcome the fears that has taken over her people and make her receptive to the request of the spies for aid. She shows herself to be enterprising as she devises a way to conceal the spies from those whom the king has sent to capture them. She has an open mind, which is displayed in her recognition of the power of God as the one and true God based on who has spread, based on what was spread abroad to the people about the nature of God, God of Israel. Her action as she bargained with the spies for safety for her family and herself represents faith in action. Rahab's actions are unusual in her time and space, yet they reveal a heart open to God's grace. She risks her, her own safety by hiding the spies, aligning herself with a foreign people, and expressing faith in the, in the God of Israel, a God who is foreign to her. This courageous act goes beyond societal expectations illustrating that God's grace is not confined by man's conception of what is right and what is wrong. Rahab's story stands as a testament to transformative power of God's grace, revealing that God is able to use anyone for his purpose, regardless of our moral character or our past sins. You know, Satan would seek to deceive you into thinking that you are not good enough to serve in God's kingdom. But Rahab is proof that God's grace is sufficient to cover a magnitude of sins. Transforming from the Old Testament to the New, the narrative unveils that the person of Jesus Christ, as depicted in John chapter 1, verses 14 to 16, Jesus, the embodiment of grace and truth, enters the human story, shattering any notion of exclusivity. His grace is not reserved for a selective few. It is offered to all of humanity. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All need to be saved, all can be saved, and all can be saved to the uttermost or completely. The arrival of Jesus signifies a paradigm shift, dismantling the walls that separate us from God's grace and inviting us into a relationship characterized by boundless love and mercy. As young people faced with daily distresses and disenfranchisement, we need to remember that our God is a God of love who loves us unconditionally and never condemns us, for he, de for he desire desires that not even one of his children should perish. When we place these two narratives drawn from the Old and New Testament accounts side by side, the parallel between Rahab's story and the description of the character of Jesus drawn from John emphasizes the universal nature of God's grace. As we delve into these narratives, let us internalize the profound truth that God's grace transcends the moral boundaries imposed by society and defies the human limitations set by our narrow-minded approach to moral reality. Let us embrace the disgrace no knows no bound. Let us embrace this grace that knows no boundaries, trusting that our faith and our courage in offering ourselves in service to Christ 
No matter how insignificant our service may seem, will not go unnoticed by the one who came into this world full of grace and truth in order to absolve us from the guilt of our sinful lives. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we seek to embrace God's grace in our lives in this time and space, we acknowledge the many challenges plaguing our youth, especially gang violence, discrimination, substance abuse, and mental health issues. Even as our society seeks to respond to these issues with various policies and programs aimed at bringing about change, justice reform, and the empowerment of youth, we recognize the unavoidable truth that the social responses are just not sufficient to respond to the needs of this broken world. The truth is, this world and our youth and young adults are in need of salvation and the, and the world as outlined in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 becomes our anchor proclaiming with clarity the source of our salvation. The scripture declares, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and not of, and not of our own efforts. This statement captures the essence of the gospel, that undeserved favor of God extended to humanity through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. The proclamation that we are saved by grace serves as a humbling reminder, reminder of our inherent human condition. All of us, without exceptions, are sinners in need of redemption. Our human efforts would always fall short of what is needed to bridge a gap between us and our holy God. Yet God's grace shines brightly through the darkness of our human condition as a gift that is freely given. It finds its origin in boundless love of God, who in his mercy sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior. The magnitude of God's love is vividly demonstrated in the sacrificial act of sending his son to bear the weight of our sins on the cross. The phrase, through faith in Jesus Christ, underscores the responsive nature of our salvation. The recognition of this gift of grace should foster with us a spirit of gratitude and dependence on the one who, in his grace, rescued us from the grips of sin and death, and therefore prompts our desires to use every part of our being to serve him, to serve him whose life was sacrificed so freely for us. Yet it would seem that young people in our age are unaware of this wonderful, miraculous product called God's grace. As it taught all other substitutes to respond to the sense of unfulfillment with which they are struggling. This tragic reality and epidemic of violence and hopefulness and suicide and murder that we are experiencing seems to point a lack of love and compassion in our young people a lack of understanding of who they are as a child of the King. Join Eli's blood through the blood of Christ with the Son of God. What we, what we see is a level of callousness and disregard for the sanctity of life that is terrifying. For these young people are not realizing that their actions are determining their outcomes. They are not grasping that the reality they are not grasping that the reality that they are the author of their own story. They have not learned the reason why, why we call God Abba, which means Father. They have failed to grasp the meaning of Jesus' parable of the prodigal son, which is a story of grace in action, much like the story of Rahab. Just as God sees 
but beyond the perceived moral failures of this young prostitute, and sees a person who has acted on her fate to offer herself as a servant to the great, to the great God of Israel, and understands that there is value in her choice to act on her faith as she embraced the grace of God, just as a prodigal son realizes that there are they, they, that there are hired servants who are living lives that are better than his, and decided that I will rise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to to be called your son. So too do our youth and young adults need to recognize the need of repentance from the evil ways and that they may experience the wonderful, amazing grace of the Father who runs to meet his wayward son and embraces him as dirty and smelly and broken as he is and calls for a robe and a ring and a fatted calf to celebrate the return of his precious son who has been who had been lost and now is found. When our youth realize that they have the choice to embrace the undesired gift, undeserved gift of God's love that defines God's grace, that is this, and this is the only possible response to the answer they are seeking. But we'll never find in the proposed solution solutions offered by the world. For it is only by embracing God's grace and faith that they will be able to experience the transformative truth of God's grace. Furthermore, let us not forget the reward of Rahab's fate when was that she became the mother of Boaz, who was the father of Obed, who was the father of Jesse, who was a son who was who had a son named David, whose son Solomon became the root from the from which sprang the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that is how a foreign prostitute who had faith in Yahweh was made a part of the lineage of, God, of Christ. Now, that is amazing grace. And similarly, if we turn our hearts to God in faith and repentance, His grace is sufficient to exalt us to a place of victory as we return as we turn our lives over to his service. As I conclude, let us reflect on these key points. God's grace surpasses boundaries as we embrace God's grace in our lives while responding to God's grace with faith. To echo the words of the hymn rector, John Newton, so was grace that taught my heart to fear, the grace my fears relieve. How precious did the grace appear, the hour I believe. We are thankful for God's favor and prayer, and pray for strength to continually embrace his grace. Rahab's story reminds us that we too have value in God's eyes and that our faith and courage can be rewarded. And so my challenge to you today is to embrace our role as Christian influencers. We have the greatest product to sell to our heart in public. Let us share the message that our product, the amazing grace of God, is the only support needed on their daily walk through life. For our product, as recorded in John chapter 1, verses 16, is... From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that this message has been a blessing to you and that you actively embrace God's grace as a renewed understanding of God's boundless mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
God's grace as we respond to the word Amazing Grace, VIP number 162, and number 162 is VIP.
church and the community doing. So that the kingdom of God is extended through my commitment, readiness, and so help me God. Morning, church. Good morning. A warm welcome to all who worship with us this Lord's Day. A special welcome to our young people, young youth, and young adults for leading this service this morning. And may God continue to bless them. Special welcome also to our Reverend. Nice, we glad to have you with us also. Notices for the day and the rest of the week. Anyone celebrating birthdays today or the rest of this week? Any anniversaries? We'll sing the happy birthday song.
all are asked to make a special effort to attend this meeting. All congregational stewards, that all congregational stewards from here at Zion, are asked to be at that meeting on the 27th at 5 p.m. next Monday. The Angola Bar Association is celebrating Law Week 2023 under the theme, Keeping Peace with the Future. We wish to draw the attention to the Church of attending the, the activities on Wednesday 22nd, this session a free legal advice day to all members of this church who are interested in going to that free session, the free legal advice session on Wednesday 22nd. We know it for your feeling, so one more of this day, International Men's Sunday at Ebenezer at 4.30 this afternoon. So all are invited to come out. International Men's Sunday at 4 p.m. at Ebenezer this afternoon. So please show your presence. We now wait for your free will offering. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks for these gifts of money. We pray for the givers and pray that this money may be used to further your work here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us pray. Our gracious Father and our God, we give you thanks for this child who stands before, before you this morning to celebrate her birthday. Father, we thank you that she was dedicated to you as a little baby. 
We thank you for the home in which she's being raised, and we thank you for all the gifts and talents that have been placed within her from before her birth. We pray that she will continue to explore these gifts and talents and that she will use them to bring you honor and glory in her life. We pray now for health, strength, wisdom, and prosperity on her life. We pray that when her special day will come, she will enjoy it with her friends and her family to the utmost, but that she will be ever mindful that every precious and great gift that she receives comes through your goodness, your grace, and your bounty. Bless her now, Lord, we pray on that special day. Amen. Amen. When is the special day? Sunday. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Okay, so enjoy it when it comes. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you. Give 
world that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will now sing the hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, in number 415 in the VIT. 